A CNN producer um, you found out has recently been or has been sharing disturbing fantasies right. about their underage stepdaughter with a former sex worker, and you informed CNN. Yeah. So how did that go? Tell us about. His name that. is Rick Salibi. He works for Jake Tapper, and a woman who's a former sex worker who knew him for ten years. I recorded him, gave us text messages showing him soliciting pictures of his fiance's underage daughter, 14 years old, also asking this sex worker, former sex worker, for pictures of her 15 year old daughter. CNN knows his name, we've broken the story, and we don't know what's going on. We're, what's the status of Rick Salibi? Uh, it was trending on Twitter, Jake Tapp was trending on Twitter, Twitter pulled the video down. So Twitter is now protecting uh, child uh, people, people who are going after children, pedophilia soliciting pictures of underage people. Um, we're living in a clown world, upside down world. And uh, Veritas is gonna keep push, putting out stories like this. And you recently had some people uh, from a certain agency coming after you as well. So what was that like? With the, with the feds? Mm -hmm. well, well, they you know they came into my apartment, they handcuffed me, they took my phones, and it was a gross unconstitutional violation. They can't do that to journalists in this country. Uh, we have a First Amendment. The First Amendment makes it clear that you can uh, publish information that someone else gives to you, even if, which we don't believe it was, but even if the information or the document was stolen, you still have a First Amendment, First Amendment right to publish it. So this was a gross overstep by the government, and um, I will, we will be vindicated, and we will get our justice, and we will not, be, we will not live in fear. We will not let fear dictate our, our actions. And you recently had a legislative win, right? There's, there's going to be someone supervising the FBI. Right. With this everything. was the uh, special master that was appointed by a federal judge in New York, uh, the Southern District of New York. Uh, the federal judge appointed what's called a special master to supervise and oversee the FBI. And the judge ordered them to stop looking at my phone. And this judge was an o Obama appointed federal judge. So sometimes there are still certain boundaries that we can't cross, and there's certain things we should all agree on. And, Raiding journalists' homes because you don't like what they're doing is, I think, a bridge too far for many people in the media. Yeah. So how much would it take for you to settle in a lawsuit with all of this? What would it be? What would it look like if you were to? My life. My price, I, I think my price is my life. We have people getting kind of pushed out of society in these, in these strange ways. You know, there are people trying to create some kind of a, a class system, divide Americans. How do people fight back from that and what is that state? Well, I think fighting back means being unafraid. I think, I think the first thing is just fear. Everything pervades fear, is so pervasive. It's, it's, a, it's the chyrons on CNN, how many people have died. They, they want you to be afraid and I think you really, you really have to stop being afraid. And, and really not let the fear control your decision making. Um, that's my biggest advice to people. Um, they're worried about their mortgages, their families, their children. You know, the time is now and at Veritas, we are the place where you can go to make a difference. So if you're in a position where you can expose something hidden that people need to see, we'll, we'll tell your story and, and there's no stopping us. You know, the only ones that can stop us is us is the message that I have. The only threat to us is us stopping. So what's at stake? Well, I mean, look at, look at what I'm wearing here, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just decide to wear it outwardly because otherwise it's gonna be under, but I mean, everything that we believe in as Americans, um, I actually think that what unites us is more powerful than what divides us. And I think we need to focus on some of those things because if we just dis dis dissolve and descend into factions like James Madison wrote about, there's no, there's no moral consensus. So I think the republic and, and the uh, democracy, we're a democracy, we're also a republic. You know, our ability to form some type of moral consensus where we can all agree on fundamental concepts People have to understand what those concepts mean. E pluribus unum, the, the right to freedom of speech. When an oligarchy controls our right to disseminate our speech. And these tech companies have more power than the United States Supreme Court. New York Times thinks they're above the courts. You saw that recently in our, in our situation, where they just don't care what the judge rules. But we're still a nation of laws. And we have to somehow get people to see that. And I think we get to see it through journalism and through exposure of what, what's happening.